Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis one more time, continuing our discussion and our playlist about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In previous videos in this playlist, we have talked about a lot of hematology, pharmacology kind of stuff. And today we'll talk about PTK, purpura, and ecchymosis. It's physical exam, baby. By the way, if you notice, PTK are small, purpura are kind of medium, and ecchymosis are the biggest. So small, medium, biggest. Oh, just to let you know. Now let's get started. In this playlist about bleeding and coagulation disorder, there was a video called thrombocytopenia. It's a must watch for you to understand this video. And it was the video number five in this playlist. Normal plated count is 150,000 to 400,000 per microliter. So theoretically, thrombocytopenia is defined as plated count less than 150,000. This is theoretically. In other words, it's what your professor cares about. But for doctors, we don't care if your plated count is 145,000. It's not going to mean anything. You're, you're normal. Provided that every other thing is normal and you have no symptoms and everything is hunky-dory. Why? Because platelet counts, like many things in life, follow this bull-shaped curve, also known as normal distribution. So here is the normal, mean, median, mode. And here you have one standard deviation to the left, one standard deviation to the right, another standard deviation here, another standard deviation there. Thrombocytopenia, for it to be clinical, you have to pass two standard deviation. So clinically speaking, thrombocytopenia is plated count less than 50,000 per microliter. So thrombocytopenia is decreased plated count. How about increased plated count? It's going to be called thrombocytosis or thrombocythemia. Same freaking thing. Theoretically, thrombocytopenia is less than 150,000. Clinically, it's less than 50,000. Causes. We have the pseudo-thrombocytopenia, which is not an actual thrombocytopenia. It's an artifact from this stupid butt machine called the analyzer. And we call it an analyzer because it's a stupid butt machine. How to prevent the pseudo-thrombocytopenia? Do a peripheral smear and count the platelets manually because the machine is stupid. It's a freaking computer. True thrombocytopenia, on the other hand, is true. It's an actual thing. Causes decreased bone marrow production, increased destruction or splenic sequestration. So decreased supply and increased demand. So pseudothrombocytopenia. Pseudo starts with a P. Occurs when you put blood in a purple tube or lavender, which starts with a P. So if it's purple, it will interfere with platelet and coagulation function, leading to the pseudo thrombocytopenia because the platelets will agglutinate together forming this rosette shape. If you look at this, here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight platelets. But the stupid butt machine counts this as one platelet. Therefore, thrombocytopenia. So the machine's gonna tell you this patient has thrombocytopenia. In fact, the patient is normal, it's just the machine is stupid. So how to prevent the pseudothrombocytopenia? Use a different test tube, green or blue. Why? Because they do not contain EDTA. Got you. What else? You can order a peripheral blood smear, also known as a blood film, and you will see platelets clumping. You can count them manually, and therefore it's not going to be there. Other option is to repeat the test. Even if you repeat it in the same purple tube, there is a chance that the patient is going to be normal in the second time, according to the stupid butt machine. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. True thrombocytopenia has three different causes, and we have talked about this in previous videos. Treatment of thrombocytopenia, and therefore treatment of PTK, purpura, or ecchymosis depends on the underlying freaking cause. No symptoms, no treatment. How about those PTK? Oh, they'll go away, probably. Steroids or folates depends on the cause, and we have talked about this before. Clinical signs and symptoms of thrombocytopenia. Most patients are asymptomatic or they can have superficial bleeding, such as skin bleeding or mucosal bleeding. Skin bleeding, such as PTK, the smallest, purpura, the in-between, and ecchymosis, the biggest. PTK, purpura, ecchymosis, 1 to 2 millimeter, 0.3 to 1 centimeter, or you can say 3 millimeter, all the way up to 1 centimeter, this is purpura. And then ecchymosis, more than 1 centimeter. If it is thrombocytopenia, you will have only superficial bleeding. 
no late re bleeding and no hemarthrosis. We only see these in cases of secondary hemostasis problems such as coagulation factory deficiencies such as the famous hemophilias. So platelet defect, superficial bleeding, coagulation factor defect, deep bleeding, re-bleeding. Now let's get organized. It's the 21st century. Get your head out of your sphincter. Petechiae, purpura and ecchymosis. First let's talk about the similarities. Let's talk about the differences. What's common, what's different and unique? Petechiae, purpura and ecchymosis. Similarities. All of them are subcutaneous hematoma or sub-Q homa, which is not a real thing. I'm just an Egyptian guy trying to be funny. One condition can cause a range of different stigmata. I love this word, meaning clinical symptoms. So, you mean that one medical condition can lead to PTK and purpura and ecchymosis at the same freaking time? And the answer is yes. Example, thrombocytopenia can cause all of them. It doesn't have to be all of them. It can be PTK and purpura only. It can be purpura and ecchymosis. It can be PTK or ecchymosis. It can be the whole three. It doesn't matter. All of these jerks have the same underlying mechanism, disruption or a defect in the vessel wall and or platelet number or function, i.e. primary hemostasis and or clotting or coagulation factors, also known as secondary hemostasis. A disruption on one or more of them can lead to subcutaneous hematoma. How? Because you bleed. You have so many teeny tiny capillaries like this and those capillaries are going to bleed and this blood is going to form a small microhematoma, and it has blood. Blood has what? Has red blood cells. Red blood cells has what? Has hemoglobin. And this hemoglobin is going to give you the red slash blue color, because you know oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood and all of this stuff. That's why petechiae, purpura, or ecchymoses have the red slash blue color. You can say violet or purple. I'm not going to be mad at you. If you remember the steps of hemostasis, vasoconstrictor, primary hemostasis, and secondary hemostasis, defect in this one, or this one, or this one, can lead to petechiae, purpura, or ecchymosis, because it has, they have the same freaking mechanism, and it's a disruption in the vessel wall, in primary hemostasis, or in the secondary hemostasis process. Causes of petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis. Thrombocytopenia can cause them. Why? Because in thrombocytopenia, you have disruption of primary hemostasis. Yep, we got it. It could be decreased platelet plugging or decreased blood coagulation. Both of them can lead to subcutaneous hematoma. But if the problem is in the platelet, why are you talking about blood coagulation? Because without platelet activation, in vain there is blood coagulation. Because platelet plug is step number two, blood coagulation is step number three. If you're not gonna accomplish step number two, it's not gonna happen step number three. Okay, just common sense. Next, trauma can cause them. Why? Because trauma is a disruption of the vessel wall. When you disrupt the vessel wall, you bleed. When you bleed, you have a subcutaneous hematoma. When you have a subcutaneous hematoma, you have a hemoglobin. When you have hemoglobin, it's gonna give you the red slash blue slash purple color. So petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis can take place even before platelet plug formation because it's a bleeding, okay? Platelet can take time to, for order for them to make a plug, but the microhematomas are so fast, you're just bleeding, blood accumulates, forming purpura, petechiae, or ecchymosis. So let's talk about causes of petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis. So we've talked about the similarities before. Let's talk about the differences. What's different? What's unique? First thing is the size. Petechiae are small, purpura are medium, ecchymosis are large. 1 to 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter to 1 centimeter, more than 1 centimeter. Associations or causes. Decreased platelet number, also known as thrombocytopenia, because it's a disruption in primary hemostasis. Next, decreased platelet function or thromboasthenia. Some people call it thrombasthenia. I don't care. And this is also a disruption in primary hemostasis. Factory production defect, such as bone marrow failure. The factory is broken. The bone marrow is on a strike. Or it could be due to secondary hemostasis defects, such as coagulation factor deficiency. So this is primary hemostasis, and this is secondary hemostasis. When you have bone marrow failure, you're not gonna get any platelet leading to defect in primary hemostasis. Next, let's talk about purpura causes. Same as those 
plus trauma, vasculitis, and amyloidosis. Vasculitis lead to something called palpable purpura. Palpable, feelable, you can feel it with your hands as a doctor. Echemosis, the largest, causes same as petechiae and purpura, plus Cushing's disease, scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency. Don't confuse scurvy with scabies, two different diseases. Next, we have the osler river rondeau syndrome, also known as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Question of the day. Please mention at least three causes of palpable purpura. You can list a bazillion causes. Please let me know the answer down below in the comments, and let's see who's going to get it first. Thank you so much for watching. There is a playlist on my channel called Medical Jokes. There is another playlist called Medical Mnemonics, and there is a website called Picmonic. It's not owned by me, it's another company, but they are awesome. See the link in the description below for a great deal. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. All of these platforms, you can get my notes and my cases at patreon.com slash medicosis. And they are available for direct download and they are yours forever. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy and study hard.